Arlo also has a passion for music beyond himself. He's always been someone who uh, aspired to see younger musicians blossom just and, and to give them opportunities that he had that maybe they don't have. So in for my own projects, he has also been uh, actually for the first five years I was living here, he was managing for me. He was the one who got me my shows. He was the one who uh, got me the AFA grant. He was the one who introduced me to a lot of the uh, mem mus musical members of the community, so to speak. So. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell a, a kind of an old story. Uh, Arlo uh, was coming up the same time I was coming up doing a different thing. I sing, obviously, and I had an R&B uh, band with a, little, with a little taste of hip hop in there. And when we were coming up, he asked me to do something and I gave him, I guess, not a warm response. And he thought that I never wanted to work with him ever. And I ran into him somewhere else one day and he was telling me about this stuff and I was like, Yo, how come you don't like you know? He's like, how come you don't call, call your boy, you know? And he was just like, what? I thought you didn't want. To I was like, when did I ever say that? So uh, I've always made a, a real effort to make it really clear that I always wanted to work with him, and I always want to work with anybody. I have I have a gift, and I'm not going to be stingy with it. I want to share it. Uh, I have to reserve the right, obviously, to say no at any point. But with Arlo, it's always been a yes, and I've worked with him in the past, and this is such a huge growth for him to to have gone from what we've done in the, in the past before to this this is oh my goodness this is the this is the mba this is not high school this is this is the real deal i'm really impressed yeah see that's the, <laughs> that's the thing about arlo he he knows what he wants but he doesn't know how to say it half the time um brad brad smith the, the mix engineer he calls it Marlinese because it's like a completely different language, you know, you can't really understand what he's trying to get at, but um, over time you kind of understand, like, you know, he says this, but he really means this, and you, know, you kind of get an idea of what he's really going for, and um, yeah, it, it's, it's good that he did have that, like, the whole concept um, planned out, and it was solid, and we came in, and it's just a matter of trying different things and finding the right thing. Um, as we go along. This is something that Brad Smith and I joke about all the time actually, is that Marlon has a very uh, complex dialogue. It's called Marlonese. And um, the whole process of making this record was a learning, a learning process to kind of figure out how to, how to read that, when to stand your ground, when to like step back, you know, kind of a, the whole thing was a process, a whole learning process, so I guess that was a challenge. My my relationship with Politic Live was pretty much the same as Motorbike James's to a degree. The only difference is because I hung out with them so much, I learned to translate their language, their, their what was it, uh, Arlenese. I learned to translate Arlenese onto uh, music. Um, places where Arlo and I butt heads, again, it was that character thing. Arlo would go in and spit a verse and it sounds excellent, the, the flow's on point, everything is good, but I didn't feel it. No, Arlo, like, if you're crying, you have to cry, man, and if you're feeling grateful, you should be happy, you know, that type of thing. Um, I wouldn't say we really butt heads because um, Arlo's a, a democratic leader. He will listen to different points. Maybe the only other thing is time, because we do go pretty late sometimes and at that time I had a steady job and I never really complained about it but yeah I don't think we butt heads on, on much at all. We have the same flavor, the same taste in music so we don't really. <laughs>